Hello everybody, and welcome to a Photoshop tutorial on how to set a black and white point. Before we begin, I want to show you a nifty trick. Normally, when you use Photoshop in our labs, you're going to realize that the previous student changed a preference, a setting, or did something to the software that you're not going to be able to recognize that easy. So, I'm going to show you how to reset the software back to factory settings. So if you hover over the Photoshop icon, before clicking on it, make sure you hold down the Command, Option, and Shift key. With these three buttons held down, and by left clicking on the icon, you will get a pop-up box that asks if you want to delete the Adobe Photoshop settings file. It is okay to click yes here, because that will make sure that it goes back to factory settings, just like you're used to seeing. When Photoshop first opens, you'll notice that to the far left of your screen are your tools, and to the far right of your screen are windows. These windows are able to become tabs as you're seeing right now. What we're going to do though for this tutorial is we're going to take away our color and swatches tab or windows by going to the far right, left clicking on the drop down box, and going down and left clicking on close tab group. Now we want to add a window for this tutorial. So we'll go up to the top of the screen where it says window, left click on it, hover down to properties, and left click on it again. You'll notice that the properties window comes into our canvas space. In order to be better organized, we're going to left click and hold down on the Properties tab and we're going to drag it over right above the Adjustments and Styles windows. You'll notice that you're doing it right because a blue thin line will appear over the Adjustments and Styles tabs. If you let go, the Properties tab and window should snap right into place. Next, we're going to want to open our very first file. So go up to the word file at the top left of your screen, hold down, and hover over the word open and let go. This will open your browser. Now normally, when you open the browser window on Photoshop, you'll want to make sure that your file is currently on the desktop. Normally, students will sometimes get their files directly off of the student server, and by doing so, you could possibly crash the system. So in another tutorial, I will make sure that I explain how to put files from the student server directly on the desktop. For the time being though, since I'm working from home, you'll realize that I'm already on my desktop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the photo that I want, left click on it once, and then go down to the open button and left click again. With my photo set, you'll notice that the bottom right window called Layers shows this thing called Background. This is known as my background layer. It's the original file, it is my starting point, and I want to make sure that I don't alter or destroy it in any way or means. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a background copy. In order to do this, you will hover over the background layer until your mouse turns into a pointed finger hand. You will left click and drag it down to the icon that looks like a page is being flipped. By letting go over this, you'll notice that it makes a background copy above your background layer. Now, several of the assignments that you first start doing will ask you to change your colored photo into a black and white photo. In order to do this, if you go up to your adjustments window, you'll notice that there is an icon that is a square and half of it is black and the other half is white. By hovering over it, it will tell you specifically what that icon does and to the top left of the adjustments window, it will tell you the name of the adjustment you're applying. So we're going to left click on this and you'll notice that your picture turns into a black and white photo. It also adds 
a black and white adjustment layer in your layers window. So far, we're looking pretty good. But let's make sure we stay on the right track. The next thing we want to do is set the black and white points. In order to do that, you're going to have to use an adjustment called curves. Curves can be found in the adjustments window, and it looks like a graph with a swiggly line in it. By left clicking on it, it will open up a new layer down your layers window, and above it will show the actual histogram and the curve line that you can manipulate. Now before we mess with the curve line, we have to do two things. One, we want to make sure that we're organized. So go down to your layers window where it says curves one, and by hovering over it, if you double click with your left click, you can rename the layer. The first one, we're gonna rename to black point. And then by hitting the return or enter key, you'll notice that it saves the name. The second thing we need to do is we need to go up to our properties window where our histogram and curves are. And before we manipulate anything, make sure you go to the top right of the properties window where the drop down box is, left click on it, and make sure that this option called show clipping for black and white points is selected. So we're gonna left click on that and now it's turned on. You'll notice in your properties and your curves window that you have two triangles at the bottom of your histograms. One is a black triangle and the other one is a white triangle. Since we're gonna be working on the black point first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the black triangle and we're gonna left click and hold down on that triangle. Now when you do that, don't be afraid your photo is not gone, but what's happening is the program is showing the clipping paths of the black channel. So by sliding the black triangle over, you'll notice that you start getting specks of black. Now normally, you only bring it so far to the point that only a little bit of black is showing, kind of like a salt and pepper feel. However, I'm going to do it a little bit more dramatic so you can see what is going on in this tutorial. So I'm going to make mine just a little bit more higher value than you would want when you actually do your photos. Now after I found the area that I like, I will let go of my left click and you'll notice now it looks a little bit darker. So before we continue, let's take a step back and look at one other thing. You'll notice that down in your layers windows, by every single layer we have, is a little eyeball icon. These eyeballs are known as visibility toggles. So for example, if I want to see what a specific layer has achieved, I can left click on the eyeball and it'll show me what I've done previously. And if I turn it back on, it will show me what I've done on that layer all by itself. So again, this was before the black point, and this is after the black point. Now the reason why we said black and white points is because as silly as it sounds, sometimes the printer can't tell the black and the white areas of the picture during the printing process. This could end up making your picture look more dull than you recall. So by setting the black and white points, and the white point is usually optional, by the way, we can end up making the printer recognize the colors a lot easier than if we skip this whole process. So for this photo, I am going to apply the white point and show you how it can affect the photo to make it better. So in order to add a white point, we're going to do the same process as we did with the black point. We're going to go up to our adjustments, make sure we're hovering over the curves icon, left click on it, and you'll notice by doing so, the properties window above goes back to normal. And before we adjust that, let's make sure we change our curves one to white point. 
So this time, we're going to do the opposite. Instead of our black triangle, we're going to left click and hold down our white triangle. And your photo should turn completely black. And you're going to want to slide the white triangle over until you get a little bit of white to show. Again, I'm doing a little bit more dramatic than I should just to show in the tutorial. Now you'll notice that I honestly went a little bit too far. Just like I said, I went a little bit too dramatic. And here is the before, and here is the after. If you've gone too far, there's a few little tricks you can do that make this photo look better than it is right now. First off, I want to explain to you about the fault line and curves. You'll notice that from the bottom left to the top right, there is a diagonal line that shows on the grid. Now, if we have too much white, if we want to just left click and drag it down, that will bring the tones or the highlights down from where it's at right now. And the closer you're to the fault line, the closer it'll get back to where we were before. So I'm just going to click and drag my point down right close to the fault line, not exactly on it. And now you'll notice if I do it before and after, it does bring the face out more, but doesn't lose too much of the black point to the point that it ends up draining the photo out. Now, the second way I'm going to show you, and before I do that, I'm going to do an edit, undo is if you have your white point layer selected and you want to stay in control of your photo you'll notice that you have this option called opacity now opacity basically will make the layer completely show at a hundred percent and if it's down to zero percent it's going to be completely transparent so i'm going to left click on this box it comes up with a little slider and i'm going to left click and drag down until those highlights are gone and there's just enough that I feel comfortable with my photo. I'm not sure about you but I think that looks a lot better. Maybe a little bit too much of a highlight but you do get the idea of where we're coming from. So again this is before only with the black point. This is after with the white point. Now after you do all that, just one last little tip. Make sure you save often. Sometimes the program will crash, other times the electricity will go out, and you don't want to lose all of your hard work. So make sure you always save. And when you save the first time, I recommend you do a file save as. That way you can save directly where you want to, you can save the format of the file, and you can rename it. So I'm going to rename mine and to the left side of the screen I'm going to save it directly to the desktop and I'm going to make sure my format is Photoshop. Then by clicking on save it will end up asking one last question saying are you sure you want to maximize the compatibility of Photoshop format options? Go ahead and click OK and now you're in the clear. So again, in this tutorial, we brought our photo in, and before we did that, we made sure we reset our preferences for Photoshop. We ended up duplicating our background so we didn't destroy the original image. We ended up learning on how to do a few adjustment layers, which included black and white adjustment layer, as well as our curves adjustment layer. And we also learned how to set our black and white points as well as stay in control by making sure our curves is close to the fault line as well as lowering the opacity on specific layers. So thank you very much for tuning in. I can't wait until the next tutorial is out. I'm as excited as you. And again, this was learning how to set black and white points for Photoshop.